what is going on guys good evening it is a tuesday september 5th just got home from work um just got murphy he's going pee i've said this before he is a boy dog he pees like a girl dog i realize this that is okay um he can pee however he wants okay don't judge us <laughs> So what we're doing tonight, I didn't wash my bike on Monday like I said I was going to because uh, I got really lazy and I went to the hot tub instead, which was nice. But um, I'm going to take the bike to the wash and then uh, this weekend, thanks to Frontier Lube, I am going to be racing Thunder Valley. Um, Frontier is going to be paying for my entry fee because they're awesome. And um, if you want to check out rider support from them, I'll have some information down in the description. But um, yeah, so we're going to actually change the oil, take out the Frontier uh, oil we have in and out, put new stuff in, clean up the air fil filter, and then um, hopefully I have a new tire to put on for the rear. So that's what's going down. Let's uh, go check. Good. How are you? Good. How was your weekend? It was awesome. Yeah. How about yours? It was good. Did you guys get anything exciting? I uh, went to the dirt bike track two days, and then nice. um, we got a year membership for Cherry Creek, so we went there with Murphy. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, oh, lots of fun. fun. Definitely. Um, the tire is mine, and then I have at least one more. I might have two, I'm not sure. So did you get that one today as well? What was that? Did you get the other one today as well? Um, yeah, one okay. of them today. The portal said I had one from last week. So I didn't really feel the need to do an unboxing video or whatever because I ordered these, so I knew what they were, and obviously one was the tire. The MX3S, the rear, the 120 for the 450, so we're gonna go put that on. Hopefully it goes nice and smooth. I got a new, uh, just the rim strip thing that goes on the rim. Just, I wanted to make sure I had a fresh one. And then I got some new tear-offs, and these are the actual laminated ones. That's why I didn't get the cheap tear-offs. I wanted actual laminated ones, which I've never ran before, but I figured that uh, they'll be sweet to use in the race. So um, got those, all from Rocky Mountain ATV MC. And um, yeah, so let's head to the dog, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at Murphy. So I said, let's head to the dog park. That's not where we're going. Let's head to the car wash. We're gonna leave Murphy here because he just kind of gets in the way, unfortunately. And he's more of a hassle than whatever. Hate to leave him here, but he doesn't like going anyway because then he just has to sit in the car and whine. So let's go get the bike all freshened up. Got the bike all loaded up in the back there and I'm um, headed off to the car wash now to wash it all up. Um, now I'm trying to figure out how I want to do the rest of the work if I want to do like the oil change first or I guess I should probably wash the air filter first because it's going to need to dry. Um, but of course I can just oil it tomorrow. I can pull it out, wash it tonight, let it dry overnight, oil it tomorrow because like I said it is only Tuesday so I'm not in too much of a mad rush. The traffic is absolutely horrendous. It looks like there's a crash up here. So that sucks, but we'll get there uh, eventually. Um, I noticed the tether was hanging in front of the GoPro, so I moved it. Hopefully that wasn't too distracting. But really what it comes down to is, do I want to do the tire first and get annoyed with it first because I'm still not great at changing tires? So do I, do I want to do that first and like get annoyed, then everything else will be easy? Or do I want to do the easy stuff and then have the tire, just this looming Mount Everest that I have to do at the end? It's not that bad, but... It's not something I'm looking forward to. Um, so I'm just trying to decide what I want to do first. Um, I don't know, whatever. I'll, I'll think about it some more off camera, but um, yeah, I'm really excited for this weekend to race Thunder Valley. I don't think I've ever, I'm positive, I've never raced Thunder Valley, be it on a 50, a 60. I didn't race an 80. Um, so um, yeah, I'm excited because now it's my home track. Now I'd say it's my favorite track here in Colorado. I love Aztec. I'll always love Aztec, but Thunder's just something different. If you watch my video from Sunday, you'll know what I'm talking about, my feelings for it and stuff, but um, I think it'll be really fun. I'm planning to just do the 25 plus B class on the 450. Um, I could do the 125 class also. I don't think it'd be as fun, uh, of course, because the 125 doesn't really have the power to clear the jumps at Thunder Valley and it's $32 more for another class and that's a lot of money that I don't really have right now. So I'm um, still debating, still trying to see what I want to do, uh, trying to decide what I want to do, but regardless, I'm really excited for it. So let's um, persevere through this terrible traffic and get to the car wash. Here you go, guys. This is why we had the hold up. Someone got T-boned so hard that they rolled. Hope that everyone's all right, but you can see that silver SUV, whatever thing, the hood up, smashed pretty good, and then on the other side of that cop car. I actually don't know how well you can see it from where I have the GoPro, but um, a car all the way up. You know, I gotta look through the crack on my windshield, but a car all the way up on its side. So that's lovely. 
about uh, causing a nice big backup behind us here. There you guys go. Be careful on the roads out there, guys. That's crazy. That's insane. Hope they're okay. Today, I actually remembered my boot stand from Jay to wash my boots, as well as my exhaust plug, which I forgot last time. Yes, I used the FMF one with the Yoshimir. I like the FMF plug better. The Yoshimir came with one, and I don't like how it fits in there. But, so we're gonna do it right. I'm just gonna set you guys up over here and get a little time lapse to clean the bike up. heavy stuff off now I'm gonna hit it with the Brillo and uh, turn off the water and everything and I'll do the boots when I I usually do it in two cycles the first cycle I rinse it off I spray it with the simple green get all the heavy stuff off and then I take the Brillo and actually scrub down my um, this part here where it's kind of dirty there scrub that down and then I rinse it off again so we're gonna do the Brillo part now There you go, it looks pretty good. Um, you might have missed my last video where I talked about washing the bike. Um, this is just how I do it, and it's just that, how I do it. Um, you might wash your bike differently, you might use different products, whatever works for you is awesome. This works great for me, so that's how I do it. I'm gonna dry it off with this, and then uh, when we get back to the apartment, after I do the work on it, I'm gonna use some SC1 and spray her down. So I'm thinking that uh, I'm going to do the tire first. That way, if the tire gives me a lot of grief and I get mad, which let's hope doesn't happen, fingers crossed, um, at least I can do that, and then I can save the oil change and stuff for another night. But um, just get the tire out of the way, that's what we'll do. So, bike looks pretty good. You know, you always miss a few spots, well, I do. But uh, overall, much better. On the way here, I showed you guys the crash with the rollover. This right here is Vickery Motorsports. You probably can't see too much, but you got an ambulance, then right next to it, you got a car, and a red truck behind it, and the car's trunk is open. Yeah, that, that guy definitely got rear-ended. So, it's dangerous out there, guys, be careful. Watch where you're going. Don't text and drive. Be, use your head. Drive not like you ride a dirt bike. How about that? Do that. There you guys go. They're getting that vehicle up on the tow truck. Crazy stuff, man. Crazy, crazy stuff. We got the bike put up on the stand. We're in the garage. We got the fan going. We got the light on. It's really bright, I know. Um, brighter in person I promise you but we're gonna go ahead and do this now if you've been on my channel for any substantial amount of time you'll know that I'm very adamant about me not being a good mechanic or a technician or anything like that so I'm probably gonna show you like a few bits and pieces I'll show you me like taking off the axle nut stuff like that but uh, I'm not gonna be here to walk you through how to change a tire um, there's many videos on YouTube the one I actually like if you look for Steve Mathis the guy who does pulp MX um, that's Steve with a V C E V <laughs> S-T-E-V-E um, M-A-T-T-H-E-S Steve Mathis, I think that's right Anyway, um, look up his video I think he did it for Transworld back when he was working with them That's my favorite one And I'm actually going to watch it before I start this Just kind of as a refresher um, Just to watch him do it before I do it Just to kind of spark everything I mean, I've done tires quite a bit now That I've been up in Denver And uh, my dad isn't close to do them So I've gotten at least kind of okay with it But I still like to double check So that's what I'm going to do Um Hopefully you could see me. I didn't think of the light being behind me there. Now it's in front of me and it's really bright. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start that tire change. And uh, fingers crossed it goes good. At least I do have a really cool tire changing area over here. I'll turn the light when uh, it's time. Actually, I'll turn it now so you guys can see. Uh, like it's so hot. But um, I got this from Big Cat Racing. I'm going to drill some holes in this table and uh, mount this down because right now it slides around, especially since I have it on this fender cover. But I, I love having this here. I have, of course, um, the tire tamer, which I just got, which is helping out a little bit. Um, and then I have my tire spoons, but they're over here. Meh, meh. Got four of those. I only use three of them. But, yes, yeah, so we got a nice little tire changing station at least. And we got uh, Vince Freeze's um, 
front number plate so John his mechanic from last year always looking over me John's looking over me when I'm changing tires helps me to not pinch tubes at least that's the thought so let's get cracking on this This is pretty cool and worth mentioning. If you guys have been watching the videos from the past few weeks, you know I got that new 1911 and then we went and shot it. This is a, um, a valve stem re removing tool that my dad made out of a uh, Winchester 2525 Winchester WSSM casing. I don't even know what caliber around that is, but um, it's pretty cool. Little valve, uh, valve stem removing tool, way cooler than the ones you get on the tube, but um, yeah, pretty sweet. So. We're gonna be reusing this tube because we just put this tube in like two weeks ago. So it's still a very good tube and um, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe there is and maybe I'm doing something wrong, but that's okay, we're doing it for today. And um, now the fun part starts. I just realized I'm probably gonna get some what are those comments because I'm wearing some ghetto old Skechers. My DC started to fall apart and they were hurting my feet a lot. These Skechers are really light and really comfortable. Obviously that sounds like an ad for Skechers, I wish. I'd be sweet get that Skechers money, but. These are just some shoes I had and they, they work. Obviously they're pretty grungy, they get the job done, but what are those? I probably only showed the part of me getting that on just now getting that valve spin through. That's my least favorite part of doing the whole tire change. And now I can't get this now on, come on. I'm all frazzled I was recording for five and a half minutes getting that. That's actually not too bad. Got this tire tamer tool so at least I didn't scrape up my hands. I'd like to tell you it works miracles and makes it freaking a breeze. Helps, helps from get, getting your knuckles all scratched up. Mine got a little bit there because I wasn't using it the whole time because I was getting flustered. But that did help, so at least we got that on. So we got the tube started part way in, put the tube the rest of the way around. Tools go flying, that's all right, it's on. All right, so we got the tire changed. I would love to tell you guys that that was the easiest tire change I've done in my whole life, but I respect you too much to lie to you. It wasn't the worst one, but it, eh, it had its hiccups, it had its snags just like they always do, but it's done, it's holding air, I am happy, um, and plus, look at that. Look at that mean MX3S. So now we got the matching front and rears, and this was the old one, by the way. So, she was hurting a bit. Um, it had some chunks taken out of it when I lost some spokes. Where are they though? Yeah, all right, look right there, look at these knobs. My spokes came out, some of my spokes broke and they were hanging off sideways and as the tire rotated through, it just ripped some of the knobs off. But yeah, I think I was about due time for one. So now we're gonna have fresh fronts and rears for this Lakewood race. The front has only had two rides on it, the rear is gonna be brand new, so um, we should be hooking up real good. My only concern is maybe I can't uh, throw whips anymore because maybe some of that, that tire was giving me some slide up the face of the jump. Is that even a thing? I don't know, we'll see, I guess on Sunday. I almost said Saturday, on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. So we got that back tire changed. It's looking fresh, it's looking mean, it's ready to grip it and rip it, if you will. And uh, my plan worked perfectly. I did the tire first, it was a pain in the butt. And um, now, I am, I'm like, I don't really wanna do the oil change, but it's not gonna be as bad as the tire. I'm like, oil changes I can do, no problem. So 
we're gonna change the oil now um, and maybe I'll wash the air filter maybe I'll just do the air filter tomorrow um, it's getting kind of late it's almost 8 so uh, yeah but start on that oil change so I'm gonna start up the bike here in a second let the oil warm up make sure it collects all the debris and then I'll drain it right back out oil change not too bad we're gonna start off by uh, removing the skid plate here so that it doesn't collect too much oil or any oil since it won't be on I'm using these T-handles that uh, my buddy Grant gave me. Thank you so much, Grant. I use these all the time. He gave me a set of these Motion Pro T-handles that have a um, 8, 10, 12, and 14 millimeter um, configurations, whatever, sizes. So, so helpful. I use them every single weekend and usually during the week, too. But, um, yeah, so I made sure my GoPro is still recording. That's why I stared at you guys all weird. But take off the four bolts that hold the skid plate on. As you can see, the T-handle is actually probably not the exact right tool for this. It's a little long. Makes it a little challenging. But um, we'll figure it out. Yeah, this is this last one right here is way harder than it needs to be because I keep hitting the ground right there. And when I do these ones, as you can see, obviously, I'm not using a normal stand. I'm using a triangle. And that's so I can work underneath the bike like this without it sitting on a stand. So there we go. We got the skid plate off. Got our four bolts. We'll keep those all together. Open up this drain pan. And take our ratchet. Pop open. Oh, and I grabbed the wrong size. Of course I did. Well, since we aren't riding, we can't have a squid squad moment, so grabbing the wrong socket will be our squid squad. I always contemplate if it's a 13 or a 14, and I swear to you, I always grab the 13 and it's the 14. So maybe now that I'm doing it in a video, I'll remember. But, uh, we didn't run the bike too long, just enough to kind of um, make the oil uh, thinner, hotter, hotter makes it thinner, so it'll drain easier but not so long that it's gonna be hot on our hands and burn us or anything. So, draining that out. While that drains, um, I'm also gonna remove the eight millimeter up top. I don't really know, just a different part of the case where oil can drain out of. So remove them both, get all the oil out of here. All right, there we are. And uh, while this is draining, I'm just gonna show you, this is the oil I've been using, this Frontier. Like I said, they're gonna be sponsoring my race this weekend, um, 10W40. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it. I, I don't know anything about oil, but it's working well on my bike. And um, I really love supporting a company that cares about its riders. And um, they're, they're actually offering rider support. So I'll have that information in the description. Um, send in your rider resume and you could get some rider support, get some uh, discounts on some oil. Um, they have chain wax, they have car wash um, they have a bunch of different like oil additives for diesels and stuff but as far as motocross goes they have um, bike oil and they have chain wax and uh, I think that's the only bike products they have regardless check them out really cool guys really cool product so what I'm gonna do now the bike it's you can see it's almost it's barely draining at all but I'm gonna take it off the little triangle stand I'm gonna lean the bike all the way to the left and all the way to the right see how much oil we get out of it Nothing really that way. Quite a bit leaning it back to the right though. Now oil changes are one of those things that people always argue about. You should use synthetic, semi-synthetic, um, whatever kind of oil, traditional oil, and you should do it, you know, after you're on the bike for five minutes. That's a joke obviously, but some people change them. I just lost my place, I found it, um, a lot more often. Some people change it every ride, every other ride. Sometimes I tell people how long I run mine and they're like, holy cow, you need to do it more often. So we're in the Kawasaki owner's manual here, service manual. And if we're looking at engine oil change, it's saying every 15 hours. So people who change it like every four hours, like you're, you're going a little overkill. This is even every six races or 15 hours. And this is the OEM Kawasaki manual. So here I keep all my data, all my stuff. So my last oil change was at 73.8 hours. I'm at 81 now, so that's what, eight hours? That's uh, under 10, so 
Um, we're still in front of the service schedule, but I know a lot of people change their oil way more often, but here you can see we keep track of all our oil filter, blah, blah, blah. And also if you're wondering, 81 hours, I did get a new hour meter at 60 hours. So starting here, we restarted with a new hour meter and, um, and the bike had hours on it before because it didn't even have an hour meter before we got it. So there you guys go. We're gonna be changing it after, uh, I don't know the exact math right now, but um, under 10 hours, so not too bad. All right guys, I just did the math on my phone. Now believe me, I'm not completely terrible at math. I took calculus as a junior. I was actually pretty good at math, but when you have a camera and you're like thinking about too many things, I, I kind of start to panic to be totally honest, which is sad, but um, if I would have tried to do that math in my head and then I said the wrong number, you guys would be like, wow, you're so dumb. So it's easier just to not say any number at all, but 7.9 hours I'm doing the oil change. So that's really good. I try to do between eight and 10, so we're actually right on schedule. So also today I'm gonna be doing my oil filter. Now I run a replaceable oil filter, reusable one. All right, I just corrupted a file, so I don't know what all I lost. But what I was saying was that I run a reusable oil filter, one of these metal ones, rather than a paper one. So um, all I have to do, take some brake cleaner. I'm really annoyed that I lost some footage because I had talked a lot, but, and then I just spray it out. And just spray that all the way out and also clean out our uh, oil filter cap here. We already dumped the oil from the side of the bike where the oil filter is, clean the bike up some and reinstall this. Now we can go on and reinstall everything. We got the little spring in there. We cleared out, we cleaned out that area. Put this on here and lightly work this on. Get past those O-rings. There we go. And then on these cowies, you gotta be really careful. If you tighten one side too tight, you can break the inside of this. And uh, these things are like 30 bucks to replace, I think. And back uh, when I first got the Cowie, I broke like two in a row. Not like same oil change. I did an oil change, broke one, got a new one, did it right. Next time I did an oil change, broke another one. So since then, I've been a lot more careful with how I do this, keeping nice pressure on, going back and forth, not tightening one side too much before the other. Now we're getting down to kind of crunch time finger tight and I'm gonna be really careful. I'm gonna do like a quarter of a turn at a time. You can probably do more than that, but I am very paranoid of these now. So um, I really take my time with them. Better safe than sorry, right? All right, so there we go. That's back on there. Now we gotta put the skid plate back on and uh, fill her up with the oil. I might not have shown it on camera, but of course I did put the two bolts back in, the drain plugs, the 13, or it's a 14, remember? I said I was gonna remember that. I did put the 14 and the eight back in, and now we're putting the um, skid plate on. You can reach those with the skid plate off, or with the skid plate on, but then of course, like I've already said, the oil drips down onto it. So we're just putting these four eights back in, and then we'll uh, tighten them on up and then put the Frontier oil in the bike. Grant, if you watch this, don't be too mad about me using a ratchet. You saw I didn't have room for those T-handles down here. I apologize. You gotta do what you gotta do, man. We have a little bit of oil that spilled as we were pulling the oil filter. No worries. It's a dirt bike, calm down. Sprayed off with some braking parts cleaner. Wipe her down, she's great. So, now we just gotta fill her up with oil. That's a very important step, don't forget that one. Check your owner's manual, but for my bike, if you do the oil filter and of course drain your normal oil, one quart is perfect for as much as you need to fill it up with. Check your bike though, some take more, some take less. For me, one quart is one oil change. It's very nice and convenient, that's for sure. Oh yeah, um, oh that bolt, that bolt for underneath, I don't know if BTO or anyone would have that, that'd probably have to be an OEM that for the um, chain slide. Yeah. Cool. Sounds great. Yeah, I'll uh, look at the times and stuff and let you know. All right, Dad, have a nice night. All right, love you too, Dad. Bye. Hey, Dad.
Of course, now it looks like a damn tornado came through my garage, so I've got to clean everything up, put all the tools away, get everything back in order, because uh, this is going to annoy the heck out of me. Everyone knows you can't do bike work and then not start the bike. Just go start it real quick. That's going to conclude it, you guys. Like I said, I'll do the air filter tomorrow. It's uh, too late for me to want to do it now. It won't even be that hard, but uh, it'll give me something to do for tomorrow. Because tomorrow I'm just going to be sitting around bored. So at least now I can come out in the garage and uh, spend some more time out here. It's always fun to be out here. Um, I'm getting better every time I do this stuff. No, I'm not great. The tire change took me way longer than it should have. But we did get it done. And so now we got this nice new tire on there. Oops. Front and rear, we got the new tires. Really looking forward to the weekend. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and um, yeah, until next time, as always, take it easy. If it's easy, take it twice. We'll talk to you later. All right, guys, I'm going to come right out and say it. there's no point in being coy about it. It takes a lot of work to do these videos. Um, I pay for all this stuff, obviously, do my own work, have my cameras, edit it all, upload it. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy, and um, yeah, I, I hope that you guys enjoy it. If you do, please hit that like button. If you want to support the channel further, if you feel like these videos are worth even $5 a month, you can support on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash do. You can do, you can even do $1 contribution if you want. You can do 5, 10, uh, 15, 20, 25, I think. You can do whatever you feel like or nothing at all. If you just want to watch the videos and like them, I appreciate that. But if you feel like you want to help the channel out more, please check out my Patreon. It's there. That money goes towards the bikes. It goes towards riding every weekend. You know, it costs 20 bucks at each track to ride. It goes towards racing Thunder Valley this weekend. If you want to be part of Patreon, check it out. I really appreciate it. If not, totally fine. Totally get it. Click here to subscribe to my channel. Click here to watch a video that YouTube recommends. I don't know where it's going to be at. But uh, yeah, subscribe, watch a video that YouTube recommends of mine. Tell me if you enjoy it. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it.